and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're doing episode four of my systems design series, Foundations of a Modern System. All right, what are the three pillars of a successful large scale system? Well, the first pillar is gonna be reliability or how the system handles hardware, software, human, and network faults. Scalability or the system's ability to grow alongside the increasing number of user volume and data. And then we have performance, which is the system's ability to execute on the tasks given to it. Let's look into these one by one. The first is reliability, and we can think of reliability as the system will continue to work correctly even in the face of faults. Let's look at some faults. The first one is a software fault, aka buggy code, I don't know, you missed a semicolon, it didn't get caught by the compiler, unlikely, or you didn't write a test well enough and you crashed your production site. It happens, we've all been there. This is not really something you can get rid of. It's just always gonna be there. We could have hardware faults, AKA one of your hard drives on a database machine just stops working, corrupts, you lose all your data. Again, nothing you can really do. It happens at random. You can have another backup copy, but these things are gonna happen. Network faults, you could get connected from the internet, bam, now your server can't uh, handle any requests. What do you do then? So can a system ever be fully reliable? Fault tolerant systems are gonna take these faults into consideration and take some measures to prevent them, thus keeping the service running despite the circumstances. It's important to note that you can never fully prevent faults. Thus, your system must have mechanisms for dealing with them when they arise, right? You can require the engineers write tests, but bugs are still going to slip through. You can have backup network hardware, but if a hurricane blows out the power to the data center, it's game over. You'd better hope you have another data center. Point number two, scalability. Scalability is the ability for your system to handle an increased volume of users and data and still maintain the expected performance. You can think of a scalable system as one, if you increase the number of resources available to the system, it results in an increased performance in a manner that is proportional to the resources added. In plain English, the more uh, the relationship between performance and the size of the system should be linear. More machines equals more computing power. Let's touch on some examples of how we can increase a system scalability and we're not going to go into too much detail because each one of these is going to be its own video. This is just to give you some examples. So the first one is going to be vertical versus horizontal scaling. So you have a machine that you're working with as part of your system and it's handling some of your requests. Well, you could vertically scale, which means that you could add more RAM, a better CPU, you know, if you're doing something graphics intensive, you could add a better graphics card. And that's what we call vertical scaling, is making one machine even better. Or what we could do is, because there's a limit on how much you can vertically scale, right? There's only so much RAM you can put onto a motherboard. There's only so many good CPUs out there. Eventually you have the best one, and what else can you do after that? At this point, you turn to horizontal scaling, which essentially says, instead of having one really beefy machine, we're just gonna have few, uh, multiple small ones that maybe aren't the best, but you can spread out the workload over them and together they can produce better performance than just one really beefy machine by spreading that load out and having each one do a small piece of the work. Another thing we could do is we could split our monolith into a microservice. So a monolith essentially is, you can think of it as one machine is doing everything. Right, it's querying your database, it's running some other service, it's doing other things. All of the responsibility lies on one machine and it does everything in your system. Obviously, most systems start out like this because it's just not worth it to invest the time from the beginning to do a microservice. You just wanna have everything in one so you can iterate quickly and get something out the door. But as your system grows, then your monolith is actually gonna become a single point of failure, which means if your one machine goes down, then everything goes down. Whereas if you have everything split up into microservices, each one can be optimized for the particular task it does. And that way, if one goes down, well, maybe parts of your system can still function. Whereas in your monolith, if that goes down, then everything goes down. So this is a way to increase your scalability by spreading out the uh, responsibility to different pieces of your system. Another thing we can do, and this is more database specific, is to partition our data. As our users grow, 
uh, in our system, obviously they're going to start producing more and more data and eventually it's not going to fit on a single database machine. There's only so much memory you can store on one. So what do we do here? Well, we can split up our data into multiple pieces. So for example, the most simple uh, partitioning way you can think of, and this is a really bad scheme, but for the purpose of this example, let's say we have users and we're going to split them up based on their last name. So we're going to take people from, you know, A to H, we're going to put them on one machine from H to, let's say, M on another machine, and then from N to, I don't know, R on another machine, and then the rest of them will go on the last machine. Obviously, this isn't great because that's not distributed evenly. Last names won't be uh, a normal distribution. So some machines are going to get more people than others, which is not what we want. But for a general example, that's, you know, a, the most simplest way you could partition things. And that's called range based partitioning. Obviously, there's more advanced methods, which are better for actually scaling your system. But for a very simple example, that's one way you could split up your data when it becomes too large to fit on one machine. So the third pillar here is performance. And this is pretty simple. Performance can be thought of the system's ability to execute the tasks assigned to it. If you have a performance problem in your system, you can think of things being slow on the individual user basis. So if you're Google Drive, maybe the uploads of your files just take too long. If you're Instagram, the newsfeed takes over 10 seconds to load and you're just sitting there with a spinner. If you're Twitter, maybe posting a tweet takes a long time. You know, you click post and it just spins and does nothing because in the background it's trying to process that request and it's just not performant enough to do so in a reasonable amount of time. And sometimes there is a trade-off between performance and scalability. Um, you know, like we saw, you can't just keep adding more to a, a machine, right? You can, you can take a machine, you can add more CPU, you can add more RAM to it, you can beef it out to the max, and you're going to get great performance out of that one machine. But like we talked about, you know, it becomes a single point of failure and it's very expensive. As you add more hardware, the amount of gain that you get you're not it's a it's diminishing returns so basically you can add more and more ram to a single machine but there's only so much you can crank out of it as opposed to if you had gone with horizontal scaling you can spread that workload out so there is a bit of a trade-off here and we'll talk about this uh, in further videos but just know that you know you can't always get both maxed out sometimes you do have to make a trade-off and that's really what system design is all about managing these trade-offs and understanding okay what are the pros of this approach uh, what are the pros of one approach what are the cons of it and making a decision based on the situation there is no real one best answer as you know all the systems in the world they're all designed differently they all have different purposes and they've all made their own decision on what was worthwhile and what wasn't worthwhile and there's always a trade-off to be made and that's one of the most important things you need to remember when designing a system is that everything is a trade-off you there's no free lunch you can't have literally everything there's no perfect um you know zen system that just does everything right there's always a trade-off so thank you for watching the next video is going to be an introduction to the cap theorem and why it's important make sure to like and comment the video as it helps tremendously with the youtube algorithm and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video in the series. Bye.